2 Peter chapter 2, verse 1. And it reads, But there were also false prophets among the people, just as there will be false teachers among you. They will secretly introduce destructive heresies, even denying the sovereign Lord who bought them, bringing swift destruction on themselves. And again, that's 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 1. And when I began to read this chapter, I began to think about ticket scalpers. I didn't know what they were called at the time. I just knew that they were the people at games that were trying to sell these fake tickets. And so we know we have these ticket scalpers that will be at different games or concerts and events because they are trying to sell an object that looks like the real thing. We know that these ticket scalpers, they're trying to receive a profit for something fake. So what they're trying to do is they're trying to mimic the trueness of a real ticket. And so I began to think and think and think how this ticket scalper relates to this false prophet. The ticket scalpers, they know when there's going to be a game, they know when, they know when there's going to be a concert. And also the people that are throwing this event, they know that the ticket scalpers are going to be there. So they are prepared, they have undercover cops or detectives there for these ticket scalpers for them to catch them in the end. Now we have some people that intentionally go to look for the ticket scalpers. They want to get into the concert or the game, but they don't want to pay the full price. They want the benefit of what the person that paid the full price can get, but they don't want to, they don't want to go through the entire process. So what we have is when we have people that look for the ticket scalpers, they look for the knockoff. They're trying to get a slide by. And we know us as Christians today, we can't get a slide by. We have some of us today that are just trying to make it. We're trying to see if we can get past the Lord with our fake ticket, when in fact the Lord knows all things. And so today, Peter, he was writing to these churches. He was encouraging them. He was letting them know to stand strong, and he wanted them to advance in the kingdom. He knew they had already had it. They already were firm. They were staying, but he wanted to keep reminding them. He wanted to let them know because Peter knew that he was not going to be with them for very, a very while longer. So he wanted to remind them. He wanted them to know, stay strong. We do have prophets. He says, I was there with Jesus. I saw X, Y, and Z. We have the prophets who are inspired by the Lord to write the word. He said, but now I'm going to leave. But you have the word right here to, to walk with you, to be with you as your guide. He said, but then again, you also have some people and some things that are going to try to present themselves to you as real when they're not. So today's topic is how, do, how to stand firm. How do we stand firm in our Christian walk when we know that there are people and things that are going to try to portray themselves to be from God when they're not? So the first part of this scripture says, but there were also false prophets among the people, just as there will be false teachers among you. The first point is we have to expect false prophets. They were back then, and they're going to be here now. We can look back in the scripture, and we can see where there were false prophets trying to portray, portray themselves to be something that they weren't. We can look back in our lives, and we can look at some things that we thought was real, that we thought was genuine, that we thought was from God, but in fact it was fake. We can look back on people today. If we look at the word and study the word of God, we will be able to identify what the trueness is versus the fake. The, the, the faith will start off, they might start off with the truth. They might start off with Jesus died on the cross for your sins, but then they'll veer off and go into their own personal thing. They'll take you from the truth into their own little lie. And when we don't expect somebody to trick us, when we think that we are so different from the people that were in the world that we can't be tricked, then that's when we fail. And we have to expect these people. We have to know the word. We have to study the word for ourselves so that when they come, we'll be able to identify that. It's people that's coming. You want to be this thing right here because you see people are drawn to this real thing right here. But you want this attention. And what the faith wants, what the false prophet wants, is they want the attention that God has. They would like to become God when, in fact, we know that they can't. So how do we protect ourselves when we are walking in this world, when we are trying, when we slip and when we fall? How do we get back up and know that we are still running for Jesus the way that he wants us to run? We have to expect these false prophets to come to us, but we have to be on guard with the word of God. 
We have to know the word. We have to have it in our hearts. When we do slip and fall, and if there is a mistake, because I'm telling you, the, the fake, it changes. It tries so much to look like the real thing, but there's always something said or done that will reveal the fakeness that's in that thing. So we have to expect the false prophet. The second part of that says, they will secretly introduce destructive heresies. We have to exclude secrets. The gospel is not a secret. The gospel is right here. So anything that's trying, they are trying to add to the word or take away from the word, they want to pull you to the side and say, I know your pastor said this. I know the Bible says this. But my book right here says this. And I'm going to tell you how this makes more sense than this. It might look good, but the Holy Spirit that is in you has to show you and let you know that that's faith. We have to stay in this word of God right here. We have to know that when people come with those little things that's new, this new thing that they're talking about, we have to know that there is nothing new. The new things that we will see, the mysteries that we don't know, Jesus will reveal those to us. Not our neighbor, not our girlfriend that's in our classroom, but Jesus will reveal these things to us. And when we don't expect the false prophet, and when we don't exclude those secrets that people are trying to put into our ear, those little whispers and those little hit here and hit there, we have to exclude those things. Because if we don't, if we begin to take in a secret here and a secret there and a little bit over here, we have our own little religion. We won't be walking in the name of Jesus Christ. We'll be walking in the name of whoever we got this information from. But we have to make sure that we are staying focused and know that just as they attack the people back in the, in the book of the Bible, they will attack us. They do not want to see us grow. But we have to stand strong, stand firm in the Lord and know that he is the one that is directing us. He is the one that's guiding us. And even when it does not feel good, even when your process, even when your process does not feel good, stand firm. Because when it don't feel good is when people begin to tell you what you want to hear. And when you begin to listen to what you want to hear, it sounds good because that's what you want to hear. I was telling Haynes the other day that I was going through this part of my process that I'm going through right now and it doesn't feel good. But when I'm going through a process like this, I don't like to talk to people. I keep myself away because I don't want to hear none of that. Well, maybe this and maybe I don't want to hear none of that. I want to make sure that I'm staying focused. I can't miss with the Lord telling me because I'm listening to you. We have to stay focused on what God is having us do, no matter what it is. And so the last part of this is, they even deny the sovereign Lord who bought them, bringing swift destruction on themselves. We have to exclude destruction. Anything that does not have the solid foundation of Jesus Christ will destroy us. Any word that comes to us that is not the foundation of Jesus Christ will destroy us. So many times we let people in our lives and situations in our lives that is not the foundation of Jesus Christ and then we fall into it. Yes, we are supposed to be witnesses. Yes, we are supposed to speak the word. But when that person or thing is overtaking you and it takes you away from Jesus to where they are, then we have to let that go. We have to be able to identify when we are about to destroy ourselves. It's not just these false prophets that destroy us. Sometimes we go looking for it. Just like that person that went looking for the ticket to try to get in, sometimes we go looking for what we want to hear. Or we go looking for who we think looks good. I'm going to go look for this pastor to pray for me because he always got on them suits with them expensive shoes and I know he got some oil and he's going to get it real good. But don't let looks deceive you. We deceive ourselves with that. We have to make sure that we are staying focused. We cannot destroy ourselves because why would you want to pay? Why would you go through this journey of a Christian walk to get to the finish line and listen to what they say? We have to stay focused and know that we are doing all that God has called us to do. And when you're going through this, when Paul said he beat his body, we got to beat our body. We got to, if you got to keep like this so you don't keep looking all every which way. We have to stay focused. We have to know which way we're going, and we have to know why we're going. Because if you don't know why you're going and you're just going, you'll be easily veered off. If we're not grounded in the Word, we'll be easily veered off. Yes. When we are going through those different times in our lives, we have to have somebody that will not give us those maybe this and try this and all that. When I was talking to Hayes, she gave me a scripture. And what I did with that scripture, the next morning I had my quiet time. And it wasn't just that scripture she gave me. I, I, Y'all know I had to read the whole thing. I wanted to know what was going on all around it. Because I just needed to see how it applied to my life. How is this going to help me? And it helped me. 
But we have to make sure that we are staying in this. We do not want to destroy ourselves. We are chosen. The Lord chose us. So for somebody as mighty as the Lord to choose me, I want to try to do my best. Yes. Even though I may slip and I may fall, I'm going to get back up, Lord, forgive me. But show me, show me, lead me the way that you want me to go. We cannot destroy ourselves. We have to stand firm. So how do we stand firm? What are some of those people that, how do we, how are we able to identify those people? Because those people, they are on our jobs. They are in the church. They will try to twist up scripture. They will take it out of context and make it mean what they want it to mean. You can't tell me that this scripture means this because, again, I'm reading the whole thing. I'm not just going to read that one little verse that you gave me. I'm going to read the whole thing because I need to know everything that's going on around me. I don't care how long I've been in church. If I know this scripture by heart, I'm looking at it in different translations because I need to get it. I need to really get it. Have you ever got something and then you looked at it again and said, oh. It's just that type of thing. We have to know what's going on. And when the Lord is progressing you, when the Lord is moving you, that's when you really know they're going to try to get you. And I ain't trying to brag on myself, but that's how I know when I'm about to go to another level. Because the attacks begin. But you have to stay firm in this. We have to stay firm in the word of the Lord. We have to get, get with him. Stay with him. If he don't talk to you for two weeks, stay in here. Don't call nobody else like, now I don't think the Lord talking to me no more. Stay here till he gives you that next direction because when he come, he come. You just got to be ready. So in close, I just want to say we have to expect false prophets, exclude secrets, and exclude destruction. Amen. Father, we thank you for the word that you sent forth today, O oh God. We ask that you allow that word to sink in our hearts, O oh God, that we may receive it and apply it to our lives, O oh God. We ask right now in the name of Jesus, O oh God, that if we have veered away from you, O oh God, that you help us to get on the right path, O oh God. Lord, show us in your word where you want us to be, O oh God, so that we can walk pleasing to you, O oh God. Help us not to be busybodies in the church, O oh God, but help us to be where you want us to be and not where others want us to be. Lord, we need you and we love you and we know that we cannot continue this journey without you. In Christ Jesus' name I pray. Amen.